and we're having to pull up and use both hands and you know and very quickly we actually overtook quite a few people and then we're in the um, and then up on the ridge um, so our fitness and just being used to this style of climbing which is similar to New Zealand we, we felt quite at home and we, we made pretty good progress quite quickly yeah. Yeah. But the summit ridge, the, the last 30 minutes, I've, I mean I've climbed Mont Blanc, I don't know, I was 7 or 8 minutes, 10 times at the moment. But not this ridge, sure. No, this, what, this, this there. Yeah, I mean, this, the end, yeah, not that, that would I've never done it, but this last hour and a half when you arrive there, it's just, you never get sick of it, ever. Because mm -hmm. you've got this sense of absolute magnificence of right at the top. So, no, I've never done this route with you, I was really keen to do it. And then that's coming down on the Dom du Goutier. So the coming down was a bit of a slush. It was a snow. It was being really slushy. There was a bit of a. Um, and so we, uh, we we stopped for a bit at the at the refuge at the BV Valo BV, which is um, there for 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 um, more as a, as a rescue hut if you get caught into the, the store. It's pretty it's pretty run down. And then one guy approached me and said, look, I've got two clowns, why want to go to the summit? The other one wants to go down. Can you take him on your robe and take him down? So we took that guy I'd never seen before, and then we took him on my robe. I thought that was quite a bit cheeky of him to ask him anyway. I wasn't ready to say no. And this guy was actually, he had, because I was really, I had to short rope him. Because we are, although we're on a, you know, we walk, the rope is going all the way, there's no real danger really. This guy was just going like this, and I had to walk. He was really um, hit by, uh, not, not severe, but I would say mild, um, mm -hmm. I just sit there. He wasn't um, happy. He wasn't happy at all. He was not happy at all. Yeah. I was like, gee, I hope we're going to cut it on us. <laughs> <laughs> so we drop in at the hut and then we did the rest. So that's the Tom du Goute, so you can see from the, you can see from the footprint that it's quite a well, uh, well um, used track. But there's some, very impressive serrats. I got lost one year in, in North Serac in the, in, the, in the fog, and that was the year I did it three times this year on the summit. I mean, really, when I got lost, 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 but really, like, before I was, I had two clowns with me, and I was really concerned because those guys were really getting really tired, and I had no idea where I was. I ended up having been far more to that side and being in the serrat. So going from Cornella to, to Don Gutierre, it felt like we were the only, relatively speaking, the only people on the road. There wasn't many people. The, the guys, the good guys, they'd gone off, they pulled their head, and we had left some of the slower people behind. And so it was really nice. And then, yeah, you hit, you tee in to the main track from, from the Chamonix Valley. And it's like, Coming off the side road and going on to State Highway One, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like whoa, you know. But we were pretty early in the morning, and the thunderstorms had put a few people off, so we were a bit lucky. We actually climbed the summit ridge the last 400 meters. We were pretty much by ourselves, yeah, yeah, pretty cool. much. We had the mount, the upper mountain, more, more or less to ourselves. At the summit, there was a few people, yeah. there, maybe five. Yeah. five plus so it was, it, it, was, it was nice. So yeah. at the summit. And on the back line, you can see all the limestone ranges of the French pre, what we call the pre apps, all the, all the big limestones. So we'll have a, um, Geneva will be just about here, and then Grenoble will be about here. So if you, if you know the origin, it's very magnificent. Um, so, so you can sort of, I think there's huge off there, isn't it? You can just see it by, by just the altitude, just starting to kick in, just the, you know, the sort of the the stop and just what the work you do, you just having to take in a little bit more here than what's available. That's a nice photo. Just the sections of the ridge were quite exposed. Yeah, um, that's a really nice wouldn't thing. want to catch a cramp on. <laughs> so up there is it um, a lot cooler? You know, just get that down to you. Yeah, it was, it was cold. Yeah, it, it was definitely colder. And you definitely uh, put the under the layer. And we stopped. We stopped here, put under the layer, the wind was still a bit of a breeze, but definitely high altitude stuff. I mean, you were roped up there? Yeah, we kept the rope on because we short roped yeah. Felix and Remy. So we, we kept the rope on. Yeah.
and you can see the refuge. So there's two, two huts and there's a, the hut. A uh, uh, baby hut for rescue mostly, not many people do that. And there's an observatory from the University of Grenoble, a glacier. Glaciology Observatory, so it's locked and the scientists go there. And they it's summer at about 9 o'clock in the morning. So lift at one, so about eight hours. It's at the top. I think it's comfort to you. Right, that's your favorite. So, we, yeah, this hut, I know all of them, if you have to rank them from best to worst, this would be the worst. So we, we, we got, we topped out about 9 o'clock, spent 15 minutes on the summit, there were a few people around, but not many, it was great, and then, Got back down, stopped at the refuge just for a breather at the, at the emergency hut that Joffre was talking about. Picked up this, helped this other guy out by agreeing to take um, Clyde down, back down to Gutier Hut. Uh, it's about a thousand metres below the summit. So we did that, we got back to the hut about 3 pm. And, you know, it would have just been really nice to go in somewhere and have a cup of tea or something and just be, be out of the center and enjoy the climb and after the climb. Walked in, the hut holds 140 people, you know. It's just like walking into a hotel. Yeah, it's not the hut I'd be very proud of the drink. Yeah, it was just very full. It was full. The, top, the sewage system wasn't working, the sewage being discharged below the hut down the wrong place. And it just, I don't know, it wasn't, wasn't very nice. No. But we were happy. We so if Mari, if Mari hadn't burned his street, we would have gone down. Yeah. And it was quite a good, look, in some ways, maybe just as well, yeah, because it would have been quite a walk. It was another eight hour walk to the, yeah. to the chalet, but yeah. I don't think we would have stayed. So we stayed there, and we, none of us particularly enjoyed it. There was another thunderstorm that night. We woke up, I don't know, 6 o'clock in the morning. The, the weather had closed in, no one had left to go climbing. Um, and we just pretty much took off as fast as we could. And in many ways, the, the section of bridge from the hut down to where the valley starts flattening out of it, in many ways, that was actually the steepest. Not even anyway, that was the most dangerous part of the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's down climbing rock, reasonably straightforward, ledges with little steps and stuff. There's wires, there's cables in there, and belay stations for the guide, the guides to, if they want to anchor for their clients. And we were descending, and there'd been recent snowfall, there'd been snowfall that night. So there was actually a little bit, that was the part that we actually had to be the most careful on, really. But we were just pleased to be out of the heart and descending. And then there's a section further down, Joffre, where is it? Where right, right, right. you cross... Just cross right here. The Grand Couloir. Yeah, you cross this couloir. And you can see the chalet. Yeah. Just to... um, and that... There's, yeah, there's a little bit of objective danger there. Cause it's, but I think that because it was cold, we had no... There was no risk. We, we didn't see many rocks coming down, so we, we got down and we walked. Yeah, we walked all the way down to the to the chalet. So it's about three, uh, three, two thousand eight hundred meter descent that day. So it was, you know, yeah. it was a long, long way down. But we were determined not. There's a train, a little train in there. Yeah. Um, and actually, Marty, he said, "Listen, I'm." I'm I can't walk down anymore. His feet was so bad, so he jumped on the train, which was perfectly understandable. But the rest of us walked down, and we, yeah, we got back down to the chalet, and yeah, back down to Chamonix. That's a sort of Chamonix we are looking at from the line. Yeah. 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 So it's, I'm glad. I'm, I really enjoyed the trip. Um, it's, it was. It's such an amazing, iconic mountain. Um, you know, as far as sort of challenging mountaineering goes, it's 
it's sort of, it's not really there, but the chart in terms of just traversing from one country to another over a beautiful summit, uh, it's, it's really nice. That's it. Any questions? What's, what's the issue with um, going over the water? Is, is there an issue? We didn't, no, there's no, no, the border yeah. runs along the summit yeah. with it. So yeah. you, 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 cross the border, you cross the border on the other side of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And um, we had normally the, because it's Europe, it's, it's, it's a Schengen space, so there's no. If you've got a, a, a European number plate, they don't stop you. But we had a where a Swiss number plate with Gavita, so we are a bit concerned they're going to stop us. And Felix Massen didn't have his passport, so we are not going to really stop us. But normally you go through if you've got a number plate. But and above there is always a, this at, at the at the top of the peripheric there is also a border control office, but. Uh, <laughs> the gear we took, if anybody's interested, um, to do the climb, we took we took a, an inner, because you get a blanket at the hut. Uh, the huts are heated, so you don't need to worry about three seats and sleeping bag. We took our inner, uh, we took our lunch, had right, some snacks. And just our climbing gear, crampons, ice axe, ice hammer, ice axe, and some basic, some basic snow park gear. Yeah. So packs were reasonably light. Yeah. Have you heard what's been happening in that area since COVID has struck? Because in New Zealand, some parts of New Zealand are more busy in some ways because New Zealand is staying home. Yeah, they had the summer was pretty busy too. The summer was pretty busy in Chamonix uh, because they lift in France and Europe lift the, uh, the restriction most of July, most of August and part of July. Um, but it wasn't that busy anomaly because it's a huge, it's one of the huge tourist attraction in Chamonix. Up to 100,000 people a day. So they didn't catch up with, although Europe was a bit more um, open in August. From what I hear from my go and sis, it was, it was a big quiet. There was some talk of Chamonix, you didn't need a permit to climb Mount Chamonix, you just needed to book the huts. But there was, there was some talk of, every year, of every making the summit actually, you've got to actually book. There was so much demand. Um, every year they got the question, every year they have committees and they sit down and every accident they say, oh, and then they sort of back off because of. Concept that you know, one should be pretty accessible, but it, it's, a, it's a matter of it's a matter of you know, it's going to happen. And in some way, there is a permit because you're not allowed to count at the summit at, around the hut, you're not allowed to count within 150 meters around the hut. And the hut are booked, and if you have a book, you can't well, they, they can't they can't get you out, but they will discourage you to come up. There are sometimes um, a police officer at the bottom of the test push up and she at yeah, the bottom of the equity will say before the steep climb there is a cop there that will stop people who haven't got booked who haven't booked the hut. Uh, you know, we are in South Europe there, so you should say, Yeah, I booked the hut and even if you haven't then maybe go so read bit too many. So it's it's far from it's far from ideal. Uh, and it's certainly it's certainly lost uh, a lot of his um, wilderness when you have to the um, can start, I mean, we, we still had a, the day on the black scene, yeah, the first day, we didn't see anyone. Uh, very nice. Uh, you can see, you can still find some really beautiful charm when you're with your new one. You just have to be a, a little bit outside the, the bit of track, a bit like, you know, you would avoid the, the wet wall if you want to go to the spot in the next, a little bit here, the north or south, the north there. But Mont Blanc, yeah, Mont Blanc is the attraction. People want to go to the top of Europe and all go. Uh, questions first. Do you know how long the, the new Guter hut's been there? Because I remember going 20 years ago and it was, I mean, it was a big hut there. That no, was the old one, yeah. The old, the old one, one is just, is still there. The old one there. is still there because they had to leave it as a safety. If that mm. one burns or had a... Mm. The, the old one is uh, it's a safety one, it's a rescue one, emergency one. Uh, how old would that be? 
Yeah, it's not special. And it's just, it's just, it's just so, it's just so intensely occupied. The old one, the old one is busy as well. Oh, the old one was busy. Yeah, yeah. 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 We actually, we were lucky, well, lucky or unlucky, depending on which way, but we actually only got Gutierrez booked about four days before the climb. So we would have been faced with keeping on going down. Which I think, you know, we would have done reasonably happily, you know, but a long day. Yeah. Do people camp, like, are the, um, do people make camps outside of those areas? Yes. Where, yeah, okay. Yes, you do, they do make camp. So it, it, it is starting, there are places now, more and more places which are restricted. You can't come from the Valley Blanche anymore because it's at the bottom of more than seven days. You can't come there anymore because it's, it was becoming absolutely disgusting. You can come at the bottom of the Gutierrez, there is about 150 meters uh, outside the, the hut, and you can't use the hut facility, which is sort of uh, uh, understandable. But I'm not sure if you can count on more, uh, at the top of the Gutierrez. You probably can leave it there, but I'm not sure you can put it down. But having said that, I'm not sure people will come. And Okay, if you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so lots of people still come. Thank you. Well, yeah, well, thank you guys. That, that's been really fascinating. Um, you know, it's, it's quite thought provoking actually. You, you see the amazing terrain that you've traversed. Then you also see the crowd problems. Um, well, that is, it's kind of a a bit of sweet experience in some ways, but yeah, it sounds like you guys made a really good plan and got the best out of it. Yeah, I think if you go to climb a really popular mountain and you end up having to do part of the route with a million other people, the idea is to try and do a traverse or try and make it special in some respect just to get, you know, some sense of achievement. Yeah, yeah nice. Is there any route finding or is the trail well and very Um. Yeah, not really any group climbing. No, it's pretty. Yeah. Now, some, there are plenty of groups, but they would have to give up for that. But the three clubs we did well. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm ever going to get there, but um, <laughs> that was the next best thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Well, I've only got, got one bottle. That's okay. Right, but but, uh, <laughs> but uh, so yeah. thank you very much, guys. Okay. Um, Ah, yeah, for those who um, want to join us, some of the committee will be just going out somewhere for a cheap meal after this, so you're all welcome to join us. Yeah, I might come along. Yeah. Uh, next month. Yeah, um, David Barnes. He's, uh, David, David Barnes, he's a, um, a Wellington based um, member of the Federated Mountain Clubs. Um, so, I mean, Good. I don't know how many of you guys even know what the Federated Mountain Clubs do, but um, it's quite an important organisation for our backcountry community. And he's going to basically give an explanation about what's going on and what the issues are, and you can ask him questions. So it could actually be a really interesting discussion.